before your very eyes you can see his whole body is immersed in these writhing brown worms. I sort of drop the, the phone that I was going to pick up and kind of back away to the corner of the room. And I succeeded my sanity roll. That's a 16 to versus 50. Still pretty horrified. This man definitely has something to do with that weird, disgusting looking creature in that tent. <laughs> that creature of a man that sold me these books. As I throw one of the books at the wall. <laughs> which, I don't book, know what... <laughs> which book are you throwing? Um, the Vermis Mysterious. I throw so, it at the wall. You passed your sanity roll. Yeah. So can you just take two sanity? And yep. you failed. You see... Um, McFadden, you see your friend engulfed in this just horrifying swarm of worms. Can you please take ten sanity? <laughs> now, this your is gut... Madness. Your, yes, it is. Your gut instinct is telling you to shoot and destroy this horrible creature, but it's your friend. It's Lucky. By mere it's tits, Lucky. What the fuck have you going yourself into now? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing Get there? The fuck no, out of me, sight, don't. You piece of shit. Don't shoot. Lucky. Don't do it. Unleash. Unleash You're gonna, every bullet he, in my magazine. You're Fucking gonna, Lucky, man. Your bullets on yourself, you daft bastard. Can you give me a firearm? So three firearms roll. Fail. Fail. Critical. Success. Okay, can you roll me... Just roll both of your d10s. Okay, so two ones. So... <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you shoot three times. The first bullet misses. Uh, but... You're usually a good shot at this distance. You're basically point blank, but you can't bring yourself to destroy this creature as it used to be your your friend and, and flatmate, Lucky. Your two rounds just scrape um, Lucky, and you can shut, see shut, um, shut. the bullets seem to dislodge like a whole horde of worms, and the worms drop to the floor. Um, and you can see, as soon as they touch the floor and sort of separate from um, the creature's body, they disintegrate and almost burn up, but without flames. It's like, you know, it's like they're burning and sizzling, but there's no fire there. There doesn't seem to be much of Lucky left in there, because it starts coming towards you with its arms upheld. It grabs both of your shoulders, McFadden, and it starts to move its face closer to yours and you can see the worms on its face sort of move aside and then you can see Lucky's face underneath and he says to you McFadden McFadden help me and then his mouth opens and worms start to spew out again out of his mouth chundering worms and they fall, they <laughs> begin to sort of fall all over your body and um, s dig into you. You can feel like it's almost like ants eating away at you. What do you want to do? Um, I'm going to grab a, a small oil flask in my back pocket and smash it against what used to be Lucky's face. Okay. So, you, can you give me a brawl wrong? Ninety-four to seventy. Okay, so you s do smash it in Lucky's face, but you, you know, it's your friend, and you can't bring yourself to smash him as hard as you did Mickey. Um, the bottle doesn't even smash. The worms seem to sort of grab onto it, and the the bottle slides down his his body. Um, Doctor Pierce. All right, so. While this was going on, I um, I re-picked up the phone and I called the um, 
called them back to the Mysicatonic University because I told them that there, I was going overseas just okay, for a bit of so, a trick. Um, Dr. Pierce picks up the phone. Miskatonic University. <laughs> All right, uh, we got we got a serious problem here. Um, can I please have a Armitage on the phone, please, right now? Doctor Pierce, are you sleep talking again? No, no, this is right now. I got worms all over my room. I went down to this 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 creepy tent, and I got this weird book with the you know with mystery of the worm, and now there's worms sprawling everywhere on the phone. Please, get Doctor Armitage on the phone right now. Doctor Pierce, this is not a game, woman. I'm a psychologist. Why would I joke about something? Can you not read the tone in my voice? Do it now, woman, please. Wake up, Dr. Pierce. This is the third time this week you've called and ranted about worms and... and I've never ranted about worms. I, I, I listen to students and other doctors' dreams. I never tell anyone about my dreams. Come on, please. I want to get him on the phone now. This is serious. I've, I'm on the case of something bigger. Big. I think I can find out why Professor Wingate Peasley uh, died. You can see the creature coming uh. towards you. It seems to hold out its arm, and its arm extends, and a, a wormy, tentacly hand extends towards you. Doctor, uh, help uh, me! I sort of crawl to my shotgun that I dropped. Okay. Not two feet away, and uh, fire. Well, it fires like a spread round. Okay. Can you give me a so, firearms shotgun roll? Ninety-four versus forty. Okay. Um. <laughs> so you fire, but you miss. You haven't done target practice in a while. I almost got me, you fucker. <laughs> my my dad t- told me how to shoot. That's the only thing the bastard is oh, ever yeah. good for. Now, oh, McFadden, sure. before yeah. you do, uh, you have sort of, um, you're backed off. You've backed against the wall, and these worms. You look down, and they seem to be multiplying. They seem to be sort of cutting themselves in half, and then growing bigger. And they're sort of just touching your chest. Is about. Well, there was about five before, now then there's ten, twenty, and now they seem to be growing. What are you going to do? I'm going to brush them off as quickly as I can. <laughs> okay. Brush them right so off. So you try and brush them, and then they attach to your fingers, and they start going onto your fingers and uh, down your arms. I'm... I'm going to run to the shower. Ah, okay. <laughs> I'm going to run to the shower and rip my button shirt completely off and turn on the water. On hot? Hot. Okay. I'm going to make my way towards the window. Okay, you make your way towards the window as this creature extends its arm once more and begins to step sort of heavy, wet thuds along the floorboards moving towards you. Are you opening the window? Um, oh, I... I well, the window was already open, actually. No, it wasn't. It was in your dream, but not... Uh... Okay, well, I'm going to open the window and jump out and kind of... Well, I'm not jumping out. I'm, like, edging on the windowsill stand thing, and I want to yeah. make my way towards another room. Okay, well, give me a luck roll to see if there is a fire escape. Or oh, nice. 14 versus 30. Okay, yes, um... There is. You can sort of cling on and uh, make your way around. The bathroom begins to fill up with steam and you take off your top and and put your hands underneath the boiling hot water. And uh, can you give me a constitution roll? Hmm. (sighs) 92 to 70. (laughs) Okay. Um, Take three damage as the skin... Uh, on your hands begins to sort of blister, well, blister and, and <laughs> bubble. Of Mary's but it, it's working, it's working. The worms um, sort of drop dead and... Not used to a like this. They pull up on the floor of the, the bathtub there and uh, sort of congeal into this black liquid and get washed down the drain. There you go, you fuckers. Oh, go back to hell. Now, you are... Uh, 
Doctor, you are clinging onto the side of the building. The wind is sort of, you know, buffeting you around. Can you give me a dexterity roll? Oh, can I push it? How? As I go to cling on, I drop, but now I'm kind of just dangling. Okay. <laughs> um, well, you could push it with a strength roll. Okay. Oh, God. Oh. You failed? Yeah, I failed. Okay, so. <laughs> um, you. Unless I can spend five luck. But no, I'm you not can't going spend to. luck on push rolls, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah, true. So, for anyone who doesn't know the rules, you can roll again. It's called a push roll. If you fail, you can roll again. But if you fail a second time, then the consequences are. Disastrous. <laughs> <laughs> My roles have been disastrous. <laughs> well, you come back into the room. Uh, your hands and your chest are burning, and you see this creature at the window. You, Doctor, clinging on. Your old spindly fingers don't have the strength <laughs> to hold on, and. You slip and fall down to the ground. McFadden, you enter the room again and see this crawling monstrosity of worms, which once was your good friend Lucky, and you see it's leaning out of the window. What do you want to do? I'm going to grab my cow trots from my little thief satchel. Douse them in oil a little bit from one of the two oil flasks that I had <laughs> brought in. And I'm going to put them on the ground and look towards the thing, the monster that was once my roommate and friend and drinking buddy and shout, Oi, you ugly fucker! Come here then! I got a meal for you, you wankstain bastard! Dr. Desmond Pierce, oh no, no, no. As you fall to your death, you feel a warmth around you. Almost like you're back in the mother's womb, although not quite the same as this warmth seems to be wriggling and writhing around you. You open your eyes. You're about five meters from the ground. You look down and then you look back up and you can see the creature has extended its arms about 20 feet down and caught you just before you fell. And your heart sinks, your stomach turns as you are slowly pulled back, back up into no. the presidential suite. Just, just let me die. And just, the worms. I just, no, don't. I I hate worms. I hate slimy creatures. I, no, please don't just let me drop to my death. I don't want to live anymore. My life is nothing but a plague. Back in the room, uh, the beast turns its head, uh, sort of like an owl, or like the exorcist, uh, spins its head round about seven times and then stops to face you. McFadden. I'm going to light a match. Not so lucky anymore, eh, you ugly fecker. And light the cow trips that I placed on the ground. With the oil and everything? Yes. Okay. Can you give me a luck roll? Can I push it? Um, 73 to 45. No, so the flames don't <laughs> ignite. <laughs> Uh, you oh, will be able to try again in another round, but for now, the beast seems to walk towards you, um, walking backwards, but then it doesn't seem to have a back and a front anymore. It just seems to be this thing with two arms, two legs, a torso, and a lump where the head used to be, just covered in these brown writhing worms. Do I have another action, or...? Well... Before you take your other action, you see the face of this Dr. Desmond Pierce raised up through the window. His body is uh, 
about one third covered in worms at this stage and uh, he is pulled back into the room and this creature wraps its arms all around him and starts please, to... Please, 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 Emmett. I'm a man of great stature and education. Don't let me go out like this. Not like this. Not rivering around like a worm. This is not how I imagined the end to be. What are you going to do? Actually, you know, give me a sanity roll first. Sure. I feel like I'm already pretty much insane, but... Ten, so... That's pretty good. Lose one? Yeah, you can lose one. Okay, and... I guess... I mean, I, my hands are bound, right? Your hands aren't bound, but it's wrapped itself sort of around your arms and your torso. And the worms are uh, crawling over you. It's quite uncomfortable. Uh, I want to get... I've got these two electrodes in my pockets that I use for my... Well, it's kind of like... I would say more of a headset for two things with like a mm, wire. Electroshock like therapy. Like an electroshock yeah. therapy okay. kind of <laughs> device. And Okay, well, I'm going to say that is in your suitcase. True. You've got a portable electroshock therapy set in your suitcase. True. Look, McFadden, these are, you know, these are biological organisms. They conduct electricity. I've got an electro kit, electrotherapy kit in my suitcase. Can you chuck it this way, baby? What? Just the big... You've got a what in your suitcase? <laughs> the big thing in the suitcase that looks like, uh... Well, what does it look like? It, it's got two nodes on it, and it's just... It's big, and it's got a lot of wires, and it's got a battery attached. You know what a battery is, right? Aye, 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 I'm not fucking stupid, <laughs> alright? I'm going to stare at the suitcase in the room, think I know what he's talking about. I'm going to look back at the monster. So, where, hang on, where is this monster? Yeah, so it's in between you and him, and it's got its arms sort of wrapped Quick. around. Okay, Quick, yep. look, he's, he's, he's occupied, his arms are here. Quick, put the device on his head. Quick. He's squeezing me, life out of me. We don't have much time. We have to work together on this. I know you're a thieving bastard and I'm a bit of an arrogant scumbag from time to time. <laughs> I'm going to go into the bathroom. Okay. I'm going to run into the bathroom. Can I use a spot hidden for like a bucket-like thing? Something I can put a bunch of water in? Um, give me a luck roll. Brilliant. Success, 23 to 45. Okay, there is a bucket under the sink. I'm going to fill the bucket with hot water. Okay, so you fill the bucket with hot water, and you come out and you see um, Desmond Pierce on the ground now, and this beast has sort of almost fully enveloped him. I'm going to throw the water onto the beast. Okay. Um, you throw the water onto the beast... And there is a horrendous sound. It's not a it's not a screeching or any sort of vocalization. It's the sound of ten thousand worms dying in an instant, their souls sizzling away. You seem to burn through the worms, and where you'd expect to see the body of your old friend Lucky. There's nothing left, it's just worms. Now, I'm gonna say you actually did quite a lot of damage to it. You gotta get the electro, electro device and shock it now when the water's on it. Look, just, just, just activate the device. The worms can't How stand. do you activate the device, man? It's got a little switch with a little... Got a little arrow, man. Ah, just, I can withstand much more voltage than these worms can. Just do it. Okay, you flick the switch. Smash the switch. Dr. Desmond, you feel a small voltage going through you, but it seems to be on a low setting. You might need to turn the dial up. You see that little knob to the left? The on switch. I think there's, there's so many Di fucking knobs. There's so many Dial fucking knobs. Full, oh. pa full power. You mean this one? It's got to be on full power, man. Come on. Okay. 
<laughs> there is another horrible sizzling sound, and you see Dr. Desmond just seizuring on the ground and sort of vibrating as he's being electrocuted, but the worms as well, they all start to have their mini seizures themselves, and they start to sort of fall off Dr. Desmond's body. Now, Desmond, can you give me constitution? Success, 25 versus 80. Okay. Uh, You won't lose any hit points, but it has frazzled a few nerve endings. Um, can you give me a sanity roll? Success. 39 to 46. Okay, well, you're doing pretty well tonight with these sanity rolls. Luckily, yeah. Just lose. Glad someone again. is. McFadden. There's the worms die, and you see Dr. Desmond just vibrating there on the ground. You realize, who? Yeah. It's probably a good time to turn it off. You've got to turn it off. You have to turn that dial the other way. A little louder, friend. I'm only fucking with you. Here we go. Okay, you turn it off. Mate, you're quite the dancer. Uh, now I finally realized what my uh, test subjects feel like oi, oi. when I do advanced neural research on oi, them. Oi, what? Oi. Is it gone? Uh, you look down at the ground and you see just a sort of uh, like a big burn mark in the ground. Um, and then you hear, before you can get up and recover and take a big sip from the whiskey, you hear... Is everything all right in there? Uh, what is that, we, room we had, service? Uh, uh, yes, oh. we're just checking up on you. Uh, everything here is tip-top shape. <laughs> <laughs> no worry, don't worry, no worry. <laughs> the room service guy um, goes to unlock the door, and you can hear the sort of click of the door handle. Can I barge the door shut? Okay. And, I'm, and I'm gonna barge it shut as I quickly run to the door. Like, ah, looking here, I'm um, wait. I'm kind of indecent here. I just got out of the shower. Can you can you can you come back maybe in oh. 15, 10 minutes? I'm gonna use a locksmith roll and but like close it shut by the lock. No, oh, you don't even need a locksmith roll. There's a uh, a little um, you know a little chain lock on there, and you can uh, okay. attach that. As you can see, I've got company. Uh, uh, can you give me a charm or a persuade? Persuade. Success. 46 versus 50. Oh. 46 versus 50. Yeah. Company. Okay, I think I get the, the hint. So it's just, it sounded almost like gunshots going off or something. Well, you see, um... You've got to get the juices flowing. Exactly, you know, arousal is, you know, if you want to stimulate arousal, you need to do certain things, especially after, uh... Oh, right, oh, so... Well, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I need to explain okay, it any further. Yeah, no, I think that's uh, <laughs> very good, sir. Uh, I'll just leave you be then. Um, uh, just, if you could just make sure there's no bullet holes. I, I will remember to keep it down from now on. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, yes, sir. I'll let you get back to it, boys. That <laughs> is the last time I am covering for you. Okay, we'll never speak of this again, because if word gets out, I think I might get let go from the university. <laughs> if word of this gets out? Well... If word of this gets out, friend, mm-hmm. we're going to a fucking mental asylum. Did you not see the same thing that I did? Well, at least we have bigger problems to... Well, at least. Well, now we definitely have bigger problems to deal with than this uh, stupid book argument. Of who gets this disgusting tome. I don't want it. You, do you want to take it home? I don't want to touch that bloody thing. Lucky touched it. Look at Lucky. <laughs> As you say that... No, you look over and you see the book open scattered on the floor, open to a page with the little drawing in the margin of the worm. And no, actually, you remember now, McFadden, Lucky didn't touch the book. It was you two who touched the book. What was your friend called again? Lucky, was it? 
Loki. Yeah, it seems he didn't even. Yeah, he didn't even touch the book. Like, did we set off some didn't sort he? of spell? I swear did I, I saw. I, it's, I didn't did he, read anything did from the book. I, I was trying to decipher it before you, you two lackeys came in here and started going so through my you're things. You're the one that turned him into a pile of fucking worms. I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with it. I, I was, I was just inspecting this book. I was trying to make a contrast between this book and Professor Wingate's diary. I was. All I wanted was answers. Now, I'm well, just left with- you got with your answer. You got your answer. Your answer is there on the fucking floor. Now made a stain that used to be a friend of mine. I think it- I think the effects on our psyche will definitely be worse than the fate of your friend. I don't know if I'll ever have a night again where I can sleep peacefully. Nor I say. It's a nice apartment. <laughs> got a spare bed. Somehow, you actually sleep quite peacefully. Sun rises in the morning. It's a clear, cloudless day. You uh. wake in each other's arms. I gotta push push myself off him and onto the floor. <laughs> How did I? What, I, 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 was, I was I was on the couch. I swear. I, I, didn't, I, I, was, didn't, I was I was here first. You must have come in after. You found me slumbering. Hey, this is my I place, hey man. This is my bed. This is my place. Just, you barged in, and then you you, you know. I, I, you, I killed the wormy creature. Or have you? Or, do you want a coffee? Oh, fuck it, man. All right. Oh, I can't really think straight without the coffee in the morning. What's on? What's like left on the floor? Like well, Spain? you get up. You call room service. You call um, for a coffee. What's room service? Well, I don't know. Here in America, because of our increased economic wealth, we can uh, we can have a lavish lifestyle like this. So we're on the press of a button. As I go to press the button, all right, I would have a uh, eggs Benedict, and can I get two coffees black, no sugar, right up to my sweet number, please. You aristocratic bastard. Can I have an Eggs Benedict as well? Make that two Eggs Benedicts and be snappy about it. Quickie, I'm hungry. Okay. I can get used to this. <laughs> so, it seems like what happened last night was a nightmare. It couldn't be. It couldn't be true. But then, you look over to that stain on the ground and truthfully... It's still there. Honestly, I thought we were having some sort of lucid dream or something, but evidence s suggests otherwise. Did you have any dreams last night? No. No dreams after I fell asleep, but... Oh, Lucky. I'm, s I'm so... Oh, Lucky, you stupid bastard. I knew that man was a bit of a whippersnapper and he'd got himself into things worse than he usually wanted to, but... Anyway, I, I do not want to speak of this again. You know, they call this in psychology an act of denial. A state of denial in great trauma, and that's what I'm going for, so... Please, I'm going to have my coffee in peace with my eggs, Benedict. Hopefully should be arriving soon. How long has it been? There's a knock at the door. Room service. Ah, perfect. You you stay here. Let me answer the door. I don't want them to get any ideas that we've, you know, we've been spending the night together. The door opens, and the uh, room service guy, dressed smartly in a nice tuxedo, the same guy from last night. Look, is that our chowder? Well, yes. He enters the room, um, sets the coffees down on the table, and sees a stain. A good Grief, how did you manage that one? It's a trick that I learned back in Ireland, friend. Look here. Sexual frustration can build up from childhood. You know, it's part of the developmental process. You know, if you have a lack of sexual activity as a child, sometimes you shoot a little bit f farther than usual. Now, can you please leave us alone? Uh, very well, sir. <laughs> I best be going now. He I hardly to, had any sleep. He goes to walk out the door, and you notice the coffee. Um, 
<laughs> How do you like that, you aristocratic <laughs> bastard? <laughs> Can't wait till he tells all of his friends that Mr. Doctor Man is going to have a pretty tarnished reputation in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you go to pick up your coffee, you notice... Worms, more worms inside your coffee. Hi, you doing? <laughs> uh, uh, you're saying that to me? I think that is just uh, the way I analyze this. This is definitely part of uh, PTSD, you know, post traumatic stress disorder. I feel like, what? What? I, I definitely think that we have some sort of, you know, we're in some sort of anxious state of mind. I need to unwind for a bit. The room. Got, excuse me. I go. Go, I go to the bathroom and I start. The oh, room man. service man turns around. Is there something wrong with the coffee? Get me another one. Just another one, please. Another coffee. Just take that one away and get it away from me. Don't look, touch it. Look here, gentlemen. What do you see when you look into this mug? Do you hold up the mug to him? Oh dear, is that... Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, oh, I feel sick. And he sort of starts to throw up a bit and his, he took, so takes out his handkerchief and... Oh no, oh, oh no, oh, hey, hey, hey. lock the door, lock the door. <laughs> and um, then... look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab him by his shoulders and drag him into the shower and turn it on as hot as possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, ain't going to do that again. Hot water, mate. Hot water. That's, no, don't that's what you think it. that is a little bit extreme? No, 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 no. No, Loki, he vomited, he coughed, and then he turned into a pile of worms and I'm going through that again and I'm not going through the electric node or the oils or nothing. No chances. It doesn't matter. You take the room service guy into the bathroom and he turned the taps on high oh what the devil is going on oh i don't feel well at all and he he <laughs> he starts vomiting up worms yes <laughs> more worms and as the hot water sort of steams him ah, ah, what, what are you doing to me what are you doing ah, it's for your own good it's for your own good trust me don't worry about it it's for your own good mate as the worms stream out of every orifice and seem to come up from underneath his clothes and eat through his suit the nodes the all nodes right. all right all right. Get the nodes! All right, here, here you go. All right, okay, fine, fine, wait, wait, fine. Wait, ain't touching them when you water at the right, moment. I'll, I'll, I'll operate the doctor. nodes. You just stand clear in case you know water conducts electricity. Stand back, man. All now, right. As I put the nodes over this guy's head, and I, you put the nodes over his head. Um, now batteries don't last forever. Can you give me a luck roll? If you fail, you have one charge. If you succeed, I'll let you have two charges. One charge it is, 70 okay. versus 30. So, this is your last charge. Uh, you haven't realized that yet, but okay. as you electrify this man, his body starts to writhe, of course, and the worms, they just begin to take him over when the hot water uh, and the electricity seems to sort of... Well, keep them at bay slightly. Um, the man's body sort of um, jitters and his arms seem to snap and crack and then he just ends up as a tangled mess on the, uh, on the floor, uh, in the bathtub. Um, the worms once again dissipate into just the black sludge which slides down the drain. And... Uh, no, I mean uh, you got rid of the worms, but you've got a bit of a situation on your hands. I, uh, I think, I think it's best that we are. We should probably leave. I, I don't think uh, that we should stick around here any longer. I mean, how we can't bat off room service forever, and uh, this place it. There's an evil over this place. Why is everyone vomiting out worms? Listen to me, all right here. I think I might. Know why? I got a theory. As you could say, that fella in the tent, he put some spell on us. We're immune to it. Neither you or me, but Loki and this fella, they've come close to the book. We were the ones that were there when you purchased it, you know. Let's He's up to some fucking uh, shit. You're absolutely right. He's played some sort of... He played on our naivety. But, let's, let's head back to the but central But we need park. to get out of here and... 
You especially, because it's all in your name. And second of all, I'm gonna um loot whatever the guy, what's guy got on him, the room service fella. He's got a skeleton key to every room in the hotel. Um, oh, big daddy will pay me big ones. He's got this. a silver pocket watch and uh, a wallet with one dollar in it. We don't have time to to mess around. Come on, we got to get out of here. All right, all right. Just give me a second. Give me a second. You notice um, as you pack up the electrifying equipment that the battery is drained and it won't turn back on. <laughs> the batteries run dry, man. Can't. Oh, ah! Oh, don't worry. I think uh, you know. Uh, well, oi, oi, I, I thought wait. that I packed a spare battery here somewhere. I don't know. And I start rummaging around frantically. Give but me a hard luck roll. Hard luck. Uh, it does sixty-eight to forty versus forty. So that's a fail. Uh, hey, I, don't worry, I didn't man. expect a long trip. I, I was expecting to be back the next. Morning, but uh, Mate, I didn't expect what happened either. Don't worry. But you don't understand. I live a regimented life of research and intellectual hey, uh, standards. So do I. I research as well. You don't understand. I, I have a job. I people's pockets. It's I have a job, thing. and I have, I have to get back to it, man. Don't worry, man. About your battery, I have a friend. I have a mate. Big circle. I have of a people. paper to write on Big child Daddy. abuse. Big Daddy will have a battery for you. Trust me. Yeah, but I still have to get back to my research. I'm researching child abuse through de de developmental stages. I have to get back to it. Fuck your book, mate. Uh, you got worms coming out of people's mouths. Uh, you got bigger fish to fry. Uh, I guess you're right. Come on. I, it dawns on you that your name is on the hotel register and there is a very strangely dead body in the bathtub yeah mate trust me i've got a way that we can get out of this Wait. trust me i have some friends friends downtown they can make us disappear from here but all right, you're going to have to... I can take your name off the records, mate. I've done it a couple of times. There's some shady folk around town. Don't trust everybody. Right. But listen to me. Stop saying on the shite. Listen to me here. I can take your name off the records, but it's going to cost you. I'm a businessman. I have nothing to give you. I, I, I can't even trust the man of your stature. All you do is run around stealing things. How could you even have any sort of connections to a man that could do that? I don't believe any of this. Now, we have to get rid of this body. But because by association, you get in trouble with the law too. So don't try to play games with me. Wait, I have an idea. You're not gonna like it, I doubt you will, but... We need to get out about this. People need to have some idea. We can't make it too obvious that it was us, but we gotta do something about it. You got a marker pen, you got something we can write with? Oh, we ain't got nothing, huh? You got those keys to the other apartment doors, don't you? I'm gonna drag the body out of the bath and I'm gonna put it in the master bedroom. Mm. And with the key, I'm gonna etch mm. Divernus Mysterious into the wall. Mm, that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I think we should leave the apartment. <laughs> Go out through the window. Yep. Well, is there a fire escape? Well, I have a grappling hook. We could just <laughs> <laughs> go down. Yep. True. Mm. You clamber out. There is a fire escape. Although there didn't seem to be one last night, but uh, it was actually on the other side well, I, I, from I, I, where I, Doctor. I can't believe. I can't actually believe my luck. The probability that I'd fail at actually that angle and miss the fire. Uh, you clamber down with your suitcase, and on the street, people are walking by. It's a Sunday. People are going off to church. Every one of them you see, you wonder, will they be next? Will they have this horrible disease, this horrible affliction, these worms? Where are you going? Well, I want to go straight to um, Big Daddy. Okay. So I'm going to go to Central Park. All right, so where are you going? 
Look, what, mate, what, what, when, what's our plan of action now? We can't just... I don't know. What if what if something else like this happened? What if it, what if another infected comes and starts vomiting worms all over me? I, now we know how to deal with it, mate. Hot water, hotness, oh, something warm doesn't like the warmth. And I tell you what, whenever I have a tro- I whenever I have a trouble or a problem, always go to Big Daddy about it. Man takes care of you. Man knows what to do most of the time. If he doesn't know what to do, he knows somebody else that does. He'll have supplies. He'll have a place to sleep, somewhere to disappear away, somewhere that won't incriminate you. Where do you want to go? This book salesman, he's the center of all our problems. So he must it have started the started with him. We must end this. I'm going to Central Park. I'm going for a walk and I'm going for a smoke. You go to your big daddy. I'm going to trace this. This scum. I thought that I could go to him and seek for answers, but I just went down the rabbit hole. And uh, I need to climb out. As I light a cigarette and I head towards Central Park. You walk hurriedly down to Central Park. When you arrive, all of the tents are gone. The book fair has been packed up. There is nothing left. I sit on the bench where I had my cigarette before I went to the room and I, uh, I reflect for a bit and then I pace around where the tent was and I look for any remnants. Where the tent was, there is a hobo sleeping on the ground. Before I approach, I'm going to do a spot hidden, looking for around for anything obscure that would be out of the ordering of what, you know, any books or parchments, anything left behind. Okay, well, give me a roll. Success 22 to 40. Mm, you can't find anything out of the ordinary. Right, so well, I approach this hobo, and uh, I kneel beside him. Is he asleep? Or? He's asleep, but then suddenly he opens his eyes and he sees you staring directly at him, and he says, oh. 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 Hey, "Who are you?" Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I was watching you. Uh, sorry, you, you sleep quite peacefully, actually. Let me get get back to my let me get back to my dream. Oh, oh, I feel sick. Oh, 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 I feel sick. Oh. <laughs> you're one of them. You're infected. And I just okay. run. Okay. I and just I think... run through the park. <laughs> and I think we're going to cut over to McFadden. Now, you stroll through the streets of New York. Um, it's quite quiet on a Sunday. And you go towards... Big boss's place, Daddy. Can you describe to me where this guy resides? Is it like a gentleman's club? Is it like uh, um, an underground? It's actually a run a rundown house, looking quite abandoned, completely covered with graffiti, half broken windows, mm. and in the main bedroom, there's been. The floor tiles seem to open. With mm. There's cracks through the w- through the wood, and you can open them, and you go down to this small attic where Big Daddy sits <laughs> with all his friends, and that's when it becomes this kind of lavish of paintings. Mm. Very lavish, quite okay. nice, but still has the touch of the dilapidated look to it. Like you know the wallpapers coming off. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like that. But yeah. still, but quite lavish. He's tried. Of all of <laughs> yeah, a yeah, nice Persian rug on the floor, maybe. Okay, you do the secret knock. The door swings open. No one stands behind it. You enter, then it creaks shut behind. You walk through, creaking through this abandoned house, and you find the uh, the hidden stairwell down the lower levels and there you enter that uh, smoky room filled with uh, pipe smoke and cigar smoke and uh, you see 
Big Daddy. He is wearing a bright purple suit about five sizes too big with koi fish swimming around orange and white speckled koi fish um, and a matching koi fish tie. Big Daddy is 113 years old. Ah, that you, McFadden? My eyesight is failing me. Aye, aye, friend. It's Hunch. McFadden, Emmett. Come here. Yes, I thought you might. What do you have to say for yourself? <coughs> he smokes a very large Cuban cigar. Big Daddy, I come to you empty-handed when I usually wouldn't. And I come to you asking for help when I usually would not. How do I put this? Lucky. Your nephew, he's dead. What? Lucky's dead? How did you let this happen? How did he die? I didn't let it happen, Big Daddy. I mean, no disrespect. I didn't let it happen. I went to Central Park, as you said. You said, you know, many rich folk around the area. But went there and found this strange, lavish-looking tent and... Decided to jump in and ask about this little artifact. Yeah, I don't and care about this tent. How did he die? What happened to him? How did you let him die? Got turned into a pile of worms. Big Daddy it had something to do with the man inside of that tent. I know it. Deep down, I know it was the f occult fucker in that tent that did this to him. Big Daddy clicks his fingers and then behind you, you feel these big, beefy arms surround you and you're grabbed. Mickey, hold him for me. Mickey! <laughs> that scar's an improvement! <laughs> big Daddy, come on, man! I've been your man for about what, ten years now it is? You know me since I was just I a lad. I don't know what the hell you're talking about with these worms. <laughs> Expect me to believe that drivel you've lost your mind. <laughs> uh, Mickey's told me that you stole a possession of his, and I know we're in the business of stealing, but not from each other. Will you return the statue to Mickey? I love you, Big Daddy. You know I do. I respect you. But let me have this. Mickey, you are one treacherous cunt. That is mine. This is my artifact. My thing I found, I stole. Mickey's lied to you. You're full of sycophants. You can't believe him. You can't believe him, big man. Can't do it. Mickey, what do you have to say? <laughs> I'm going to grab the artifact and shove it into his skull as hard as I can. Okay. 